Hi, I'm Zen, and welcome to this video on how to create this awesome card flip animation you can see on the screen right now. This is done using just HTML and CSS and is very popular in websites at the moment. So let's run the intro reel and get into making it. Time for the standard housekeeping before we start. If you want to skip this, then jump straight to the timestamp you can see on the screen. As always, in the description I have the link to the files that I'm using for this video, so you can follow along. You don't need to, of course, but they're there if you want to. I'm using Visual Studio Code and the Chrome browser for this. If you want the same setup as me, then just follow the card being shown in the corner right now, and that will take you to the Getting Started series of videos, which include getting the same setup as me. This video is the first in a three part or more mini series. So please like and subscribe and whack that good old notification button so you don't miss them. So here we have the three main stages of creating the flip card. This first card allows us to rotate at 180 degrees, but note the back of it is the reverse of the front as if it was printed on glass or something. And also the shadow also flips along with it as well, which makes it look a little bit unnatural. The second stage gives us the back of the card, which almost completes the look. However, the third stage also adds a bit of realism by adding the perspective to the rotation. Notice how it actually feels like it is moving in the 3D space, especially on that edge as it comes towards us. So, as always, we start off in the HTML. We start off with a very simple blank HTML page that's got a simple div wrapper applied to it, as well as a link to the CSS file. When we look into the CSS file, although it has some level of formatting, these are all the basic stuff that doesn't really add to the functionality of the cards. It's just there so that the stuff we're going to put in there looks nice. But again, I should just show you the code in case you want it. And again, don't forget all these files are available to download in the link in the description. I'm using the live server option in the Visual Studio Code because we've got that extension installed, which is the live server here. And so that's what we've got on the right hand side. This means as we do updates on our code, we'll be able to see it reflected in our pages straight away. So the first thing we want to do is to add the card coding. So we have this parent here called card, and this is needed for the perspective trick that we're going to be using later on. After that, we actually have the card side. Okay, so this is actually going to be one of the physical size of the card that people will see. And we see we've given it a class of card side and card side from. Then inside we just have some text for it. When we save it, we can see it's not really looking very much at all. So let's go and add that good old required CSS. This code here is really just for the wrapper card, if you like, where we position it and we've had to include the width and height values so that our positioning trick here will center it nicely correctly. Now we need to add the side card code. And here we have it. The majority of this is again just nice sort of coding for our card as we can see here sets out all the, the basic dimensions so we've got something to work with however to make this look proper we need to add the code now for the actual front modifier of that card and here it is and we just save it we can see it basically just adds some beautification to the card there is no functional work in this bit here it is just to make the card itself look nice and fit into whatever we're trying to do in that website. So where's this darn animation you might be asking? Well, first we have to ask ourselves two things. When do we want the animation to actually happen? And what do we want it to do? The answer to the first is when we hover the mouse over the card itself. Well, over what card? Are we talking about the side card, this one here? Or are we actually talking about the parent card itself? We have to be very careful and precise in our decision on where we're going to apply the animation to. In my opinion, I want it to happen on the parent card one because that eliminates any problems of the minor cards, the sub cards like the front, back, maybe I've got more than two cards here interfering with each other. And the answer to the second question is that we want the card to rotate 180 degrees. And so that creates the following code. Now, if you're a frequent visitor to my YouTube channel, you would have seen this code before, especially from the Into the Wild series that we've done. For those of you who aren't unsure of this, let's just quickly go through this. We are saying that if you are an element called card side front, 
that happens to be a direct descendant of a element with a class of card, which is currently being hovered over, then we want this rule or this property to be applied to it. For those of you who are keen eyed, you'll notice the minus sign here, and that is just to help to tell the browser which direction we want it to rotate. So let's see what it looks like. And we bring it over, and well, that works, but it's not really an animation, okay, or not the type that we want. So to turn it into an animation, we need to add the transition property. As you can see, we've added a property to the card side card, and it says transition, and then the type of transition that we uh, want to do is the transform, okay, because that is what we're asking it to do there. We're saying we want it to take one and a half seconds for it to take place. And here we're actually using an easing in and out function, just to sort of make it a little bit more natural in its rotation, rather than just using linear. And if we do a cheeky save and a check, wait for it to reload, and there we go, we have it working. There's our cards rotating. So time to move on to stage two, where we're going to hide this back and give it another card for it there. However, before I go any further, I have a requested shout out. So this is for you, Paul O. This is your shout out, sir. Your shout out request is now complete. So back to the code. First thing we want to do is to hide the back and that is actually very easy to do. Again, this has been applied to the card side and it's just property called back face visibility and we're setting it as hidden. It is visible by default and we can see that this works now. So if we save this, we move a mouse over and it literally completely disappears. Maybe a little bit more severe than what some people were thinking, okay? You might have thought, oh, it'll just get rid of the images and the text. Nope, the whole thing disappears which is why we need to add a second side card for the back. And as always, HTML comes first. And here's the code that we're using. You can see it's very similar to what we've done before, except for now we're using the modifier in the Ben method for the back. And as you can see, just a H4 rather than the H3 that we had, and some just paragraph text. One thing that's very important to point out though is this closing div here which matches that of the card. See, this one matches this card here, and so this one matches the master card or the parent card. Let's make sure that both of the side cards are in fact inside of the card class itself. Make sure that you haven't accidentally kept this one here, and therefore keeping this back card outside of the card set. Now, if we save it and view it, so let's just bring this back into normal position. So cheeky save, as we say, and well, not quite what we're expecting, but again, we haven't really applied the CSS to this card yet. This is just what happens when we apply the side card class and not the modifier card side back, which means we're gonna to have to add that to it now. And this is the code that we're after. We can see it is almost identical to the front card with the exception that we are positioning it towards the bottom. Okay, and also we have a different color, so again, we do another save and we can see it looks the part. However, we are going to need to hide it. The way we do that is that we start it off rotated 180 degrees because that way the browser will know that we can see its back face and it will hide it due to back face visibility that we've got from up here. So let's do that cheeky save and we can see it disappears. However, it doesn't yet appear on rotation. And the reason for that is that we haven't got the equivalent one for the back here. So let's quickly add that in. And here's the important piece of code that we need. Again, you can see it's almost identical. Again, notice we're doing minus zero. This is for direction control. So we're gonna save this and we see it disappear there. Now when we put our mouse over it, look at that. It's working exactly the way we want it to. The only problem we've got here is that there is no perspective here. The problem with this, you see, we'll move it out, come back in. It just looks like it's been squished. It doesn't feel like it's really being rotated. The final step, like we said, is to add this perspective part. 
Now this in itself is actually very easy to implement. To work out the value that we need to use, however, can be a bit confusing. You see, the perspective values tries to stimulate the effect of how far away you are from the object when you're viewing it. A low value indicates that you're very close to the object and can lead to some very weird looking effects Thing, sort of fisheye lens being right in front of you, whereas a large value will cause the transition to look so far away that it may even look like it's a 2D animation. So again, as always, let's talk. Let's see this in action. Now, if you remember from right at the start of doing this video, I said that we needed this card for this perspective, and here is the code we've got for this perspective here. The perspective has to be applied to the parent card element and not the child or the side card that are actually gonna be generating the effect. This is how the browser and the CSS does it. I don't know why, but that is a lie. Now, we're here, we're using a relatively small distance of 30 rem or 300 pixels if you're using the 62.5% uh, cheat that we do. So let's save it and see what it does. And you can see right away there what happened with the back card. If we just animate it here, we can see it goes really close to us as if it's right in our face. Okay, so 300 pixels is way too close for this to look comfortable. However, if we change this to say 30,000, we are going way, way far away. So 30,000 rem is 300,000 pixels away. And I'll be honest, in my test, this is actually really no different than about 150 rem okay it seems to be like once you go over a certain value it's almost always the same and here you can see it now to me i can still see a small bit of perspective but it is getting much closer to how it was without using perspective at all and what you have to do is to play about with this to find a number that you feel works for you and for me i quite like 90 rem so when we save this, we can see that it comes out just a bit. So it lets us know it's coming towards us, but not too much that it's over distorted. This is one of the things that you need to spend a lot of time with, but I found somewhere between 90 and 130 works really well, but your mileage may vary. So why not spend some time trying about this code, changing this value, and seeing what works best for you, and whacking that in the comments below. And essentially, that is it, my friend. My work here is done. As I said at the start, there's gonna be a couple follow-up videos on this, including the incorporation of using this card code with the Into the Wild series, and further applications of using this technique, what other things we can do with it. However, that is the end. So thank you so much for staying with me all the way. I really hope you've learned something and you found this enjoyable. If there's a video you want me to cover or you just want to ask me anything, please, please do whack it in the comments section. I do honestly read every single one. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm Zen, signing off.